Hello class, this is section 2.4 and in this video we are going to talk about a little different situation. This time we have a circular rod or a rod shaped like a donut. The way we like to think about this is that we can unroll the rod to make it seem like a rod that has both ends connected. So this is how it looks like in terms of the boundary conditions. We have the temperature of one end, same as the temperature of the other end. This is expressed by u minus lt equals ult, because obviously the two ends are really connected, so the temperature is the same. And by the same reasoning, the flux of one end, the heat flow through one end, is the same as the heat flow through the other end. Again, the two ends are really connected, even though we think of them as unrolled in this way. And that justifies the second boundary condition here. And we also have, uh, again, the heat obeying, the temperature obeying the heat equation, and we impose initial conditions as well. We begin as we did the other cases uh, by finding the product solutions. So we look at the product solutions of the form uxt equals fxgt once more. Once again, plugging the, plugging it in, we find the equation for g exactly the same. We have 1 over gt partial gt partial t equals minus lambda over k here. And this gets us the same solution we always got. We have that gt is equal to e minus lambda k t. We set the constant in front as 1, as usual, to make things a little bit easier. Once again, it's the Laplace, uh, it's the eigenvalue problem that's going to be different. We have this time 1 over fx equal uh, partial of fx partial x squared equals minus lambda once more, but with different boundary conditions this time. So we have that f of minus l is equal to f of l and the derivative of f with respect to x of minus l is equal to the derivative of f with respect to x of l. So this eigenvalue problem, we can solve it and again we can find that the eigenvalues are uh, similar to the previous cases we have lambda equals 0 and also n pi over L squared for n 1, 2, 3 and so on. And the eigen functions for lambda equals 0 is 1 and the eigen function for lambda equals n pi over l squared or we have two different sets of eigenfunctions this time it's either going to be sine n pi lx or cosine n pi lx we have two different choices of eigenfunctions and this means that our product solutions are going to be of this form. Either un xt equals e minus k n pi over l squared t cosine n pi x over l x or un xt equals the same thing but with sine instead. I've put an extra x over here apparently. Okay. And this means that we need to write down our fx in this form. fx is going to be a naught plus sum from n equals 1 to infinity cosine a n times cosine n pi x over l plus sum of n equals 1 over infinity b n 
sine n pi x over l. And again, this is also another version of Fourier's theorem. Not another, there are several versions of this theorem, obviously, and this is, a, this is the third version we're talking about. And it turns out that the formulae for finding a not for a and a and b are similar to the previous cases. So we have a not equals one over two l the integral minus l l f x dx, which is similar to what it was in the previous example. Uh, please note that we have the constants in front of integrals for the, these have changed. Uh, remember that our rod here goes from minus l to l, so it's twice as long as the rods that we were using before. Uh, in the previous examples, the rods went from x equals 0 to l. So our rods are twice as long, and that's why the constants here are twice as big. But we have am equals 1 over l. Again, the constant is different, but that's just because the rod is longer. And this is going to be fx cosine m pi x over l dx. And lastly, we have bm, which is equal to 1 over l, go minus l to l, fx sine m pi x over l dx. And once we do that, we can expand out our initial condition fx in terms of sines and cosines in this way, and then figure out the appropriate sum of uns and un tildes to solve the initial heat problem uh, as in the previous cases.